Dear brothers and sisters, you are all welcome to one more broadcast of the Life for All Institute, general subject, Philadelphia. He who has ears, let him hear. Now we got to message number 11, entitled, Can Anything Good Come Out of Nazareth? Scripture reading, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 46. Today, we're broadcasting live in a very special streaming because we are live in the Teenagers Conference, the Holy Generation Conference at the Avre da Vida Retreat Center, Sumara, São Paulo. This is a a word to our teens who really love the prophetic word with a revering love for the word. They make immersion, transcription, the sleep with God, sleep with God. The whole day they are deep diving in this word. And most of them is following the word on screen with the Thursday's broadcast, Saturday broadcast, and also they're following the prophetic word on Sunday at 7 p.m. Brazil time on TV. But now we decided to award them to give this word to them to broadcast live in their conference. Praise the Lord. This generation, the Lord raised them out of the blue as dewdrops, as mentioned in Psalms 110, verse 3, that they fell as a gift from God to form this great army who will bring the Lord back. We will build up his church. We will preach the gospel of the kingdom with these teens who are today forming teams with the captains and also with the senior ones in the churches. In the last message, we spoke about some final comments of the Waldensians who were an example of life to all of us. And they were raised from the 20th, 12th century. They were the ones who struggled for the word of God, even though they were going through a very gloomy time in the church history. They were bravely uh, martyred. They were persecuted. People tried to put an end to them, but they were not able to. Yet, when Reformation came, they joined the Reformation, and little by little, they were molding themselves to the religious culture of the time. So, let me read just some final comment of someone who knew them quite well, he said, a warning for us. We have to avoid losing our identity. And this can only happen if we maintain constant appreciation to the word of God by seeking new light and do not be content with the light that we have received. No. We have to seek new light. A second point, it is to maintain the emphasis, the evangelistic vigor, that is to say, to preach the gospel. Our mission is not completed in the world, and we do not even, even understand it, the word of God, fully, and to proclaim it to the uttermost parts of the earth, 
by thus fulfilling our vision, our mission. That, that's what I asked to the saints next to me. What then is our identity? What is our DNA as a church in the church life? Thank the Lord that in the early church, the Lord gave us an example of the DNA in regards to the word of God. This is in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching and in fellowship of the breaking of bread and in prayers. This is our DNA in regards to the Word of God. The Word of God given to the church through his apostles, through the teaching of the apostles, it is up to us, the church, to fellowship on this word. This word gives us direction. This word carry out the work of God. The same word governs the church. This word will do the will of God. This is our DNA. On the other hand, the second part of our DNA, it is that we preach the gospel. We must preach the gospel of the kingdom until the end comes. We cannot lose the evangelistic vigor. That is why, over the course of centuries, now in the end of the first century, This first part of our identity was already contaminated. But praise the Lord, the Lord recovered among us. The word for us, it is not merely a beautiful preaching. The word for us, it's not merely a sermon we hear on a Sunday morning. The word for us, the word of God for us, it is the word that carry out the work of God. When the Lord, he raised the brethren at the 19th century, So far, Reformation did not penetrate in other truths other than just remained for three centuries in this revelation of the justification by faith, given the great pressure of the church in Rome and the papacy because of the terrible mistakes that were there among the people of God. But when the Lord in the 19th century, he began with a group of people who realized that in the church, there is no hierarchy. There is no class of clergy who are experts in the, in the word, and the others laymen. They did not understand anything in regards to the priesthood, in regards to serving the Lord. So, they began to, to take out all the titles as pastors, priests, reverend. They began to call themselves just brethren. We are brethren. That was the first point. The second point, it is that they were concerned about, through the Bible, getting to know the oneness in the body of Christ. Well, if the church, the church which was broken free from the situation of the church in Thyatira became the church in Sardis, 
in the during the Reformation, but still, the church brought many vices. The churches they were belonging to the state. In England, the church was the English church. Whose queen or king is the head of the church? And in Germany, the church is Lutheran, state churches. With that, some who did not agree with that, and they, they raised particular churches, like, for example, the Presbyterian Church. But in the Bible, you can see that Christ is the head of the church. And where is that been practiced on earth today? So they, they, they went after the oneness in the body of Christ. And in this way, God gave them this grace with many other truths were being revealed on the prophecies of the Old Testament, the truth regarding the rapture, the second coming of Christ, and so many other truths had been restored. So they began to, have, to hold their own meetings, conferences, and Bible study to present these new revelation to the people of God. But this made to raise a different kind of identity. Which one is it? The identity of each one with a new light to present his truth. And this caused many masters and teachers who presented the Bible in different interpretations and revelations. Unfortunately, what that caused then, for other centuries, at the time that was raised, did not happen, but later on, that was content for sermons, for uh, sermons of beautiful messages. But since the Word of God, as it was in the first century, the Word of God is not merely a content for beautiful preachings, for sermons. But the word of God, when it's preached as, an, as a gospel, it is to carry out the work of God. The Lord, praise the Lord, he revealed to us more clear, clearly today that the word of God does the work of God. So, when we today, we who love the word of God, the revelations the Lord is giving us, we do not take these words alone for a content of good preachings on a Sunday morning service, but we take this word for God to fulfill his will, his work among us. First biblical foundation I want to present to you. There are many biblical foundations for you, but I would like just to present you some of them. In the Gospel of John. First off, let us read Acts chapter 2, verse 22. 40, chapter 2, verse 42. The teachings of the apostles. What happened to them? The church, fellowship on those teachings. And then with the church, fellowshipping on it, the church can press on, can move on because they have direction. The work of God is fulfilled. So the church, fellowshipping on the word of the apostles. This is the first biblical foundation. The second one, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 10. Jesus himself, he said, Do not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works of God, does the works. So the words that Jesus said, they were not his own words, but these words came from the Father. And these same words that came from the Father did 
the works of the Father. The Father works of the Father. What does that mean, brothers and sisters? Today, we have a, the DNA that when the Word of God comes to us, we love it with reverence. This Word, it is not merely for us to have good sermons, good messages, but this Word, it is to carry out the work of God. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So the word of God, brothers and sisters, it is as the rain, this snow from heaven with a purpose. They do not fall from heaven merely for a futile purpose. No, the purpose it is to make the make the the earth to bring forth and bud to give seed and bread to the eater same thing happens with the word that comes from my mouth says the lord what does that mean i want to make it clear to you that we have in our hands the Bible. The Bible, it is the word Logos of the Lord. It is the word, the constant word. It is here. Everything is written here. It is written. Everything is here. It is a word Logos, constant from the Lord. Yet, God uses his constant word and he speaks to us a word rima a word at the moment that we need at the, the the time that we are in need of it is like a rain the rain which came down last season they are already past rain the lord needs we need rain in this season so, saints, the word, we have a constant word, the word logos, but also we have the dynamic word, the word that comes forth from a tap, which flows constantly and dynamically. God is not a stagnant God. God is a God that moves. God is a God who carries out his will. So God is a God who speaks. Do you understand the difference? The light you received at a certain time, the soul, sunlight you received at a certain point in time. At the next time, the light you will receive, the sunlight, it is a new light. It is no longer the light you had received before, right or not? So at every moment, every second, every minute, the sunlight is a new light to you, isn't it? Isn't that so? It is a new light, the light that gives you life, that gives you heat, that makes your life to grow, the plant to grow. It is the light that makes life to exist on earth. So this light, God sends at every moment, every second. So that is the way the word of God does. The word of God is not something static. The word that comes forth from God's mouth, it is dynamic. It keeps on sending word, word, and more word. We receive it for what? To do the will of God. To carry out the work of God. So, and let me read for you verse 11. And then you understand it. So shall my word... So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, 
but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So every word, God has a purpose. In every word, there is an intent. In every word, causes a certain word that God commanded to do. You teenagers are in a conference speaking about you being the friends of God. Jesus said to his disciples, you will be my friends if you do what I command you. Brothers and sisters, is to command you, it is the word. The word of God is a word of commandment carrying out the work of God. Praise the Lord. We are all friends of God. We are servants of God, and we are friends of God. So the word that comes forth from God's mouth, it is to do the will of the Lord. It shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So the word... It's not merely a content for good messages. The word, it is to do the work of God. So this is our DNA as for the word. But on the other hand, we have another DNA, which is to preach the gospel. To preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because our Lord, the king of the kingdom of heavens, let me just read for you two, two portions. In Matthew chapter 9. Our Lord Jesus, he left heavens. He came here to be a man, and he showed why is he was he here for. In Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Brothers and sisters, we cannot miss out on that DNA. The church must be a church that follow the Lord the King, the King of the kingdom of heavens. Look, he came here from city to city, villages to villages, preaching their synagogues, teaching their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Brothers and sisters, we cannot be enclosed in four walls. We also must go out into the streets. Let us go from city to city, village to village. Let us preach the gospel of the kingdom. The best way to preach the gospel of the kingdom, saints, it is through the books. The books explain very well. They make people to deep dive in God's need of having a kingdom on this earth. In God's need to head up the lives of people and the church life. And more. When he saw the multitudes, verse 36, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the streets, they preach the gospel. May I pray for you? Use the immersion sheet. But you can realize that on the streets, people are weary and scattered. People are with infirmities and illness. And you are bringing them healing. And still, there we lack workers. Verse 37, and he said to his disciples, the harvest is really, really plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Brothers and sisters, we have lots of needs. We have to preach the gospel in all inhabited earth. This is in Matthew 24, 14. Let us read it. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Our scope is the whole earth for the preaching of the gospel. 
and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. This is our mission. This is our DNA. We preach the gospel of the kingdom in all the world, in all inhabited earth. Today, brothers and sisters, we have saints in South Korea. These past weeks, they were in Japan. We have today people in Africa, South Africa. We have today in Central America, people preaching the gospel of the kingdom. South America, Europe, North America, Oceania, Saints, the Lord is giving us little by little, yet we are of little strength. We are just a small flock, but it, it pleased the Father to give us his kingdom. If he gave us his, his kingdom, he will give us condition. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are lacking laborers. Praise the Lord. This morning, there was a calling for those who were in the house of teens who are already getting to the age of 16, 17, 18 years old, already finished their high school. It is already time to spend some time in their lives in GPC. And this morning, Many answered this calling, and they already decided to go to GPC because laborers are few, but the harvest is plenty. Therefore, dear teens and young ones, it's very good for you to learn a second language, English, Spanish, French, if you can, other languages, better yet, because there's a, a large need of preaching the gospel all over the earth. That is why, brothers and sisters, we are speaking to our co-workers, leading ones in every region, for each one of them to be responsible to raise the GPS here. We need human resources. We need people to be perfected and to be sent. Those young ones who want to continue studying in college, may they go on their studies, but never miss out on that spirit of this evangelistic vigor. That is why we prepare, prepared the House of Captains for them. Still, spend time, some time in GPC. And also for that, we need financial resources. Praise the Lord. The Lord raise a group of people who are kingdom investors. We encourage each one of you to be a kingdom investor. Let us contribute for the Lord's work to have resources to advance. It would be pitiful the, the, word, the Lord's work does not advance for the lack of resources. No, the Lord will provide those resources and through us. Let us take over this earth for the Lord. But I have to enter the message. Unfortunately, this word that does the work of God which came forth from the apostle's mouth, when was Paul's time, the end of his life, something had already deteriorated this principle, this identity of us. In 2 Timothy, let us turn to second letter of Paul to Timothy, Chapter 1, verse 15. 
Paul said with very much grief, this, you know, that all those in Asia have turned away from me, among whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes, dear teens and young ones, do you believe that in the end of the ministry of the Apostle Paul, all those in Asia have turned away from him? Can you believe that he remained in Ephesus for three years, night and day, admonishing them, ministering to them, serving them for all those in Asia to receive the word of God. And these same ones in Asia who receive much benefit with the word of the apostle and in the year 67, the first century, it turned away from the word. When it turned away from the apostle, it means that they already, for some time, there were no more love for the word. There was no more appreciation for the word of the apostle. Am I right or not? That was one of the reasons for the church's degradation. Not only that, in chapter 4 and verse 16 in 2 Timothy 4, 16, Alexander, First Timothy 4, 16. Alexander caused And in my first defense, no one came after me. All those of Asia turned away from me. Made this. This is very pitiful. What happened? Second Timothy 4. Uh, praise the Lord, the Spirit reacted through you. Uh, 14, Alexander the coppersmith did, did me much harm. Praise the Lord, the Lord gave us a generation of teens out of nowhere who appreciate the prophetic word. Not only you, the preteens are also looking at you. They are also really in full speed, not only the preteens, the teens also. Do you believe that the teens who are three and four years old, five years old, are already learning from you? You want to do war cries. They are already watching on TV the prophetic word. Do you believe that or not? The Lord is performing miracles. Children, preteens and teens, young ones and captains, whole church today Restored love for the word. When people lose love for the word of the apostle, degradation comes in. When the love for the word is restored, the Lord restores his church towards the church he always desired. That is what we are here doing it. Paul, he was a chosen vessel of God. Acts 19.15. Let us read it. Do you, are you lazy to open your Bibles? You're not, right? So, let us turn to Acts 9.15. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he's a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So Paul was chosen by God as a vassal to Minister the word of the teachings of the apostles. And in Galatians, in chapter 1, and verse 11, Galatians, you know where Galatians is in the Bible? No. 
is after 2 Corinthians. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Brothers and sisters, this is not a teaching of man. It is not a human preaching. It is not to use human wisdom or of human eloquence. No, for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of the apostles, the teachings of the apostles, has no origin in the apostles. The origin, it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. God is the one who gives revelation. Then God used this wonderful vassal, Paul, and made the gospel to spread on Gentiles land. The, the gospel was, was spread in Cilicia, Galatia, Asia Minor, Christ, the Aegean Sea, Macedonia, Achaia. His third journey reached Rome, Italy. And the word of God through this channel did the work of God and raised Churches were raised all over those regions. But the enemy of God, knowing that the word ministered by the Apostle Paul, that the gospel prospers the work of God, used in the Judaizers in Jerusalem to try to confuse the people of God. They went after Paul. Whatever he went, they went, they went, uh, causing damage. It said to the churches that they did not have only to believe the Lord Jesus. They went on Paul's trail and they said that they had to keep the law of Moses and also circumcision. This is the work of them who also uh, gave many messages on genealogies of the men in the past, the Jews, the, the Jewish myths. This caused lots of distraction from the apostles' words. But not only that, there were also plays that Paul worked, especially region of Greek culture. And the, the Greeks are very democratic. Democracy was raised there. I don't know if you know that. So they were very open for everyone's opinion. Greek philosophers had freedom to go to the squares and to show their philosophical ideas. People had the right to hear and to enjoy or not. So some were for this philosopher, others for other philosophers. They thought and the church of God was also like that. We can appreciate the word from this one, from that one, and to choose whoever to follow. But saints, this is not the way it is in the church. This is not the way it is. That is why 1 Corinthians in chapter 3 that caused confusion to the people of God and they began to say, oh no, I'd rather to hear from Paul or Cephas or Apollos. Oh, I'm of Christ. This caused division with the Greek culture. Brothers and sisters, When the Lord raises somebody with this democratic concept, we'll be always asking, why the Lord is speaking only through him? Can the Lord also speak through me? Do you remember when Moses' sister and brother, Miriam and Aaron, let us turn there. You like to open your Bible, so let us turn to Numbers chapter 12. Did you, did you find it, Numbers 12? In verse 1, we read, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. It seemed that the pretext was different. So what did they say in verse 2? So they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? The Lord heard it. Saints, people always question, 
why the Lord only speaks through Moses. Can, he has not spoken, he has not spoken through us also, or the other one also. But that's the way the Lord works, isn't that right? And then on verse six, then he said, now "Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision, and speak to him in in a dream." Not so with my servant Moses, he is faithful in all my house. Brothers and sisters, in all God's house, which is all the people of God, God has only one servant, which he gave the responsibility for them. Here we don't read it, that there are no other prophets. Yes, there are other prophets. The Lord speaks to, to them in a vision or a dream. But with Moses, he was the prophet. Through him, the Lord would give direction to the people, the word of God, the direction of a government to God's people to do the will of God. Well, saints, that's our, our difficulty lies in that, in understanding that. That is why in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, in Portuguese, we will be reading in the King James Updated which is a little more clear, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law or the word of God. Let me repeat it. Where there's no revelation, people who do not accept the Lord's revelation, it is the people is a nation without order. The people cast off restraint. What, what does that mean? To whom the Lord reveals, to his prophet. It's not for anyone who wants to be prophet. So he who does not receive the Lord's revelation is a nation without an order. They cast off restraint without direction. But happy is he who keeps the word of God. That is why, brothers and sisters, many today they testify that we are living the happiest moments in the church life. Isn't that right? Because we learned to obey the word of God. Lord Jesus. When the church rejects the Lord's revelation, in rejecting the words of the apostle, they lose direction, they lose the government of God. It is a nation without order. And then... That thus begins degradation. Paul knew that he had done his part. He trusted in the Lord. Those saints, he trusted a righteous judge who judge with justice, with righteousness. You know, he was not sorrowful in everyone turning away from him. But he knew the Lord used him and did the work of God. But the rest was with God, with the work of God. So, saints, but one striking characteristics of the Lord's servant, it is to lo love the Lord's coming. Those who really love the Lord's coming, they fight for the will of the Lord to be done as soon as possible. They do not lo lose time in doing their own work. They do not delay the Lord's work wanting to gain popularity for him himself to gain followers. If they do that, they will delay the Lord's return. So they, those who do not love the Lord's coming, those who, want, who love the Lord's coming, they want to do the Lord's will as soon as possible. So they don't have room for their will, for their work. Lord Jesus, who serves the Lord with a pure heart, because he's only interested for the church to be built up, the gospel of the kingdom to be preached for the Lord to come as soon as possible. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 from verses 6 through 8. Paul already knew that even though they all turned away from him, but they know that everything is in the Lord's hands. 
is only a servant who did his part. But then he says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Saints, the characteristics of a true servant of God, it is to, lo to love the Lord's appearing. That is why, saints, in all messages I say, let us bring the Lord back. I'm not interested in anything else. So may we do his will for the Lord to come one day soon. Why did I begin in this way? Because today I'll be speaking about Brother Dong. Brother Dong, those who are close to him, they know he's a servant of the Lord who loved the Lord's appearing. He loved the Lord's second coming. So since we're talking about a progress the Lord did in conducting his church, the direction to the church in Philadelphia, we'll have to report how the Lord used Brother Dong Yulan, his coming to Brazil, and one of the outstanding characteristics of the servant of God is his love for the Lord's coming. Dong Yulan was born in 1920, the city of Nimbo, Tekin Province, China, 1920. Nimbo was a city that produced many businessmen with a strong entrepreneurial culture. His childhood alternated between periods of plenty and scarcity, which stimulated his entrepreneurial spirit. He was successful in his business in some regions of China. However, he had to move to Taiwan in 1949 during the Communist Revolution in China. In Taiwan, due to his business acumen, he soon prospered in trade and set up factories. In 1955, he was converted to the Lord at one of the meeting places of the church in Taipei, which followed the ministry of Witness Lee. He became a very active and involved member of the church, later became an elder. He has always provided financial support and logistical support to Brother Lee's work. And his property in Taipei was one of the meeting centers for his co-workers of Brother Lee. As we said, in 1958, Dong Yulan was impressed by the need to immigrate to the Western world in order to bring the vision and practice the church life and decided to study Portuguese with some others with the goal of moving to Brazil. Since the purpose of this work it's not a personal biography, but rather a description of the path the Spirit took to restore the church to its original state 
We will not go into much detail about his personal history. If you want to know the details about his personal history of his biography, you have a book, Resilience, okay? Then Heeding God's Call by Faith, Brother Don set sail with his wife and five children on a 48 day journey into the unknown. You cannot imagine, brothers and sisters, that many years ago, people did not know in the East regarding Brazil. Some sisters from Taiwan even came up to my mom and they said, for her to bring toilet paper and lamps because they did not know they would find it here. Such is their ignorance of not knowing Brazil. Maybe some hear about Brazil, they think uh, maybe men are just, uh, you know, in a jungle with monkeys or it's a lot of courage, somebody on the other side of the earth to, to put their whole family in set sail in the 48th journey into the unknown. Saints, this is by faith. That was by faith. The Lord called. The Lord gave him faith. After several years, wait, then he in 1960, he became Brother Lee's main co-worker in South America. He arrived in Santos on August 11, 1960. After several years of trying to bring the vision of the church, oneness to Christians in Brazil, the Lord confirmed his ministry in 1977. He ministered the word at a conference in Belo Horizonte. But until 1977, the Lord had raised churches in Brother Dong's assistance in Sao Paulo, Belo Horizonte, Annapolis, Brasília, Ribeirão Preto, Araraquara, São Carlos, Sabuticabal, Sertãozinho, São José do Rio Preto. And being always very faithful to the Lord's burden given to him by Brother Witness Lee, and being the entrepreneur that he was, he emphasized the aspect of life and the practice of the word. Since he had no academic theological training, but rather he learned from the words he received in the church and from life experiences he had. He was not theoretical. He was not a scholar. Brother Dong was a businessman. He did, he did things to happen. He wanted to, to produce, to bring fruits to the Lord. Then, and the Lord soon placed in his hands, in addition to Brazil, all the Spanish-speaking countries in South America. And through immigration, his work also extended to some regions of other continents. In the year 2000, he had the vision of Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. If you want to take a look at it, let us read it, Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. And there we read, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and in her head a garland of twelve stars. And being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain, who gave birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, 
seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and the, threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. 1,260 days are three years and a half. Unfortunately, I do not remember to ask people from the Institute to prepare the image of the world map. Further down, when looking at the world map, he saw a dragon, an eagle, a male child, the African continent, and the eagle on a desert, the South American continent. What did he see? Several things there. We need to go to Africa to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because the gospel of the kingdom has been preached in many continents, but not in Africa. So from the year 2000, we went to Africa to, pray, to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because when in Africa, the overcomers as that male child are ready to be born all of the overcomers all over the earth will also be ready for the birth. When will be the birth of the male child? The male child it is a strong part of the church. They have it on screen. Can you see it? The dragon, the eagle, and the male child, fetus. Not the African continent would represent the overcomers, but by the Dong's vision, it is that from us reaching the gospel of the kingdom and to raise the male child in the African continent, the Lord will return. And when the male child is born, the dragon, look at the world map, has his uh, mouth opened, ready to devour her child, the male child. But the male child is fighting for the kingdom. Who is part of the male child? Say me. Everyone who's fighting for the kingdom, everyone who's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, who's governed by the word, governed by the kingdom of God, we're fighting for the kingdom of God. We are the strong part. We are Zion. We stand up and fight for the kingdom. When? Brothers and sisters, it is time to finish this age. The male child will be born. When it's born, the dragon wants to devour it. But when this male child is born, will be caught up to God. In God's throne. So, saints, I want to be part of the male child. That is why I have hope to be caught up alive. Because it will not take too long to get to this day. This day will come. Because as soon as the male child is caught up to the third heaven, the great 
tribulation will take place. The overcomers will be freed from the great tribulation. I don't want to be here. Those who are here will be greatly persecuted by the Antichrist. But there's a place, a refuge, for those who stay. I don't want, I don't want to be here. Those who are here will have to flee to the wilderness. Where's the wilderness? Just here where we are. South America will be the wilderness. That is why, brothers and sisters, we have to distribute many books over here. I don't want to be, but we'll be sowing many books over here. Because this wilderness must feed the church that remained for three years and a half. This is the vision Brother Don gave it to us. This helped us in expanding to spread the gospel on the African continent. The content of his ministry was very life-oriented, leading people not to trust in themselves, but in the power of life that is in the Word and the Spirit. He insisted that we should live a life taking up our cross, learning in all situations to deny ourselves, that is to say, to deny your soul life. Father Don spoke for a long time about to deny your soul life. This is in Matthew chapter 16. You young one did not go through the spirit of it. Let us read it. Matthew chapter 20, chapter 16, verses 24 through 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life, psyche life, will lose it. But whoever loses his psyche life for me, my sake, will find it. For what profit? Is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come into the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Let us deny ourselves, deny our soul life, and he brought us second half of his ministry, the vision of the kingdom of God. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5. Who still saw that part? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5. Brother Dong was in awe, for he has not put the world to come, of which we speak in subjection to angels. But one testified in a certain place, saying, Why does man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? Who are we? We are nothing. And the Lord gave much importance to, uh, to us. You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. Set him over the works of your hands. Saint, who is man? You have put all things in subjection under his feet. So this proves that causes envy to the fallen angels. God did not make angels to subject the world to come but man. For in that he put all things subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him, right? Today I said to Amir, right, Amir? 
Are you awake? We were killing mosquitoes here in Estancia, right? Then I said, one day, you know, when, when will these mosquitoes stop bothering you? When it is, our redemption is fulfilled. When the redemption of our bodies happen, when the moment of glory of the children of God happens, when the moment of God really to for man to receive glory, glorification of our body, and then the whole creation will be redeemed from the captivity of corruption. And then mosquitoes will no longer bother us because we'll break free the whole creation from corruption. Very good. Let us continue. So, verse 9 now. But we see, well, we, we do not yet see all things put under him. Verse 9. But we see Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. He, by the grace of God, would taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him for whom all are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Things are still not subject to us, but Christ was already crowned with glory and honor, and all things are already subject to him. Now, he is perfecting us so that all things are also subject to us when we are headed up by Christ. Did you understand it? Then we will be reigning in the world to come. That is why, brothers and sisters, for the kingdom come, there's a need to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14. I read it to you. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all inhabited earth for a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. From the beginning of his ministry, Brother Dog's heart was filled with the mission of the church to make disciples of all nations. Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded to you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Saints, this is the mission God gave to the church. Brother Dong always kept that in his mind. We must preach the gospel. And in Mark 16, 15, let us read it. While we obey this order, verse 15, we read, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, Set down at the right hand of God. They, who are they? The church. They went out and preached everywhere. These are us. We so said then we go out to the street to preach everywhere. Who is working with us? The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs the accompanying signs. Saints, this is our experience. With an entrepreneurial heart, it soon realized that in order to God's work consistently, tools were needed. First initiative 
this regard was to found a publishing house to publish books with the goal of spreading the revelation of the Spirit through the written word. In 1975, the work of the Avri da Vida Publishing House began. Its first names were Publishing House Restauração Fonte da Vida, and then in 1978 was called Tree of Life Publishing House. And today, we publish books in almost every continent and countries where we operate. You know tools, you know what a tool is? A tool increases efficiency of work. A tool increases productivity, increases yields. Imagine today since we, if we did not have tools more and more enhanced since it would be harder and harder to do a work. Today, with proper tools, we save a lot of time. Praise the Lord. Brother Don, as an entrepreneurial man, businessman, he, he, he then paid attention in having tools to spread the gospel. One of them is the Tree of Life. The other one is the Tree of Life flowchart. Flope this better down uh, the spirit then prompted better down to publish it knowing that all revelation received from the lord is for all of god's children the flow of life magazine but whoever sees it should not be proud but rather humble serving all of god's children as waiters god or dong spoke to us in 1989 the spirit of serving God's children, the flow of life magazine was raised. Why? Because so far we're, we're young. We, we gained the church oneness, vision uh, of the practice of one church in one city. And we had a certain pride that we were the ones who knew the Bible better than others. And we, we were somewhat proud about it as a young man. But Adon, in that conference in 1989, he broke our pride. He said, Lord gave your revelation not only to you, Lord gives revelation to all the people of God, all the children of God. We only received firsthand, we have the responsibility to bring this word we receive to other children of God. So we cannot take that with pride, looking from top down, teaching others, oh, you don't know the Bible, and I do. Well, let me teach you. No, not this way. Brother Dong said, let us serve them as a waiter. Let us humble ourselves and serve them the word of God as waiters to other children of God. And then that's how the Flow Life magazine came to be. Then books need to be distributed and rich people. So Brother Dong always had in his heart workers were prepared to do this inspired by the model of peter waldo the 20th century wealthy merchant from lyon france who was saved by reading the word of god he commissioned the translation of the new testament into the franco-provencal language and equipped his sales team to carry copies of the biblical text hidden in internal bags with straps hanging around their necks. This is where the name co-putter comes from, for preaching the word. Brother Dong then said, to the example of the Waldensians, today's co-putter, they bring the revelation of the word to people with a goal of preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So today, people have Bible in their hands, but they do not have the revelation. They do not have the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. We are responsible to preach the gospel of the kingdom. That is why we must take the revelation of the word to people on the streets. Therefore, in 1989, in order to strengthen the co-porting work, 
He created the co co-porters cooperatives and also with the goal to promote books. The book Axpo project was created in 1991. These vehicles are converted into libraries and reading rooms with book exhibitions, which travel from city to city with teams of co-porters and with the participation of brothers and sisters from nearby churches. Initially, several buses were adapted for the project, and today it has expanded to three large trucks with expandable rooms traveling throughout Brazil. And also today we have several adapted trucks, vans, semi-vans in several countries. Let me quickly share with you how this, did this happen. Went with Brother Dong to Buenos Aires, Argentina. And their Brother Dong, a brother said to Brother Dong, here we have nearby a, a used bus on sale. What do you, Brother Dong, think of us buying this bus and adapt it to a library for a reading room? And then we went to see I took the dimensions of the bus and immediately Brother Dong said on the way back to this brother's house, I began to draft a project and Brother Dong said well, during the day library reading rooms that night turned into beds for the saints to sleep in the bus. Let us put a toilet here. So as to his description, and I drafted a project I drafted on the bus and left to this brother for him to fulfill it. But on the way back in the plane, when we were flying back, where the dog was sitting next to me and said, Pedro, when we land in Sao Paulo, go and buy a bus. I'll just start Book Expo in Brazil. I was scared. And I said, Brother Dong, isn't better to wait so if it still works in Buenos Aires, we're kind of a little bit uh, standoffish. And then Brother Dong was so quick and he said, no, go and buy it. Then I went and, and, I, and I went to look for a bus and I don't know where to buy that. And I had to go to Belo Horizonte to buy a used bus, one block, I brought it to Sao Paulo. I don't know how to reform to renovate it and ask Mother Jonas to reform it. Let us do this project. It was quite easy. We knew nothing, right? Quite quite difficult, sorry. We didn't know anything. But then the city of Cruzeiro, we started this activity and we called this, we call it bus 1001. When we started with this bus, Brother Dong said, buy five more buses, buy five more buses. But Brother Dong is somewhat crazy, right? And we learned to do these crazy things with him. That's how we started with six buses right away, all over Brazil. Today we have trucks, vans, SUVs, trailers, Praise the Lord, bringing the gospel of the kingdom all over the world. Hallelujah. And to answer the need of co-porters, to answer the needs to meet the needs of co porters in 1998, GPC was raised. Gospel Perfecting Center. In Brother Dong's vision, the mission of the church is to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the entire inhabited earth. The testimony to all nations in the end will come. So there's a need for many co porters spread throughout the world for this work. Since then, GPC is producing many co-porters to meet the demand. 
já we need to broaden this work way more today the lord gave us continents so saints let us get more gpcers let us call more laborers to be perfected in gpc to form teams of co-porters to labor all over the earth one more tool book affair Books that lead to faith. When, upon receiving the light regarding the kingdom, that is, it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, but to men. He became even more desperate for the dawn to preach the gospel of the kingdom. He, Brother Dong, was not satisfied with the traditional way of the church gathering together, living within four walls. He wanted the church to have a more accessible environment for people with a more welcoming environment for the public and with extended hours. Welcome all those who wish to know more about the kingdom. So in 19, 2009, he promoted Book Affair. These are cozy spaces where people can sit and have a coffee books that clarify God's purpose available to them and attendance to have fellowship in the word. Thus, the church was awakened to be more open and more available to the public with a view to preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You know what we were like? We we're like secret agents. We used to rent a place for me for meeting. We we're even afraid of putting a sign, the church, in such and such place. Oh, this is a building, so we cannot use that. So then we didn't use any, any sign at all. We were secret agents. Why? Because at a certain time of the week, dozens of people started getting in this building with a hymnal book and the Bible under their under their arms they sang secretly, secretly they go they leave they lock the building use it only two three four times a week mostly we were like that secret agents nobody knew who we were but praise the Lord For the spirit of Brother Dong has changed our lives. And we began to go and after the people, going out to the streets and bringing people in the common sea. Saints, he was a faithful servant to the Lord and faithful to the ministry that the Lord gave him in his time. He closely followed the word ministered by Brother Lee and ruminated on it to feed the churches in South America. He took the word, ruminated on it, did not pay, did not give give us doctrine, but in the way of life and practice for the churches in South America. His messages were published in books for daily reading called today Daily Food. We have it until now. This publication became responsible for supplying all the churches in South America and an important factor of blessing and oneness for the people of God. As we reported in the previous chapter during his visit to Brazil 1984, Brother Lee observed a very healthy situation among the churches in Brazil. He was impressed by the way the work was being conducted in Brazil, by the spiritual atmosphere of the churches, by the excellent absorption of the word by the audience, and by the high level of joy and enjoyment in the meetings. These are irrefutable proofs of the way life is being led by the Holy Spirit. The impact of what he saw in Brazil was so great that when he returned to the United States and described in detail 
the entire situation of spiritual blessing he had seen in Brazil as if confirming that this was what he would like to have as a result of his work. However, the reaction was skeptical and incredulous because can anything good come out of Brazil? Latinos are known as flesh in the pan, quick to catch on fire, but short-lived. From 1984 onwards, Brother Lee was busy preparing the Chinese version of the Bible. He had finished all his studies on the New Testament, known as Life Study. He also commissioned some of them to start the full-time training of workers, FTT. Brother Dong asked Brother Lee how he should continue the work in South America as there were no more messages to follow. He was not going to share any more messages before in the U.S. He used to go to Taiwan. There were no more messages. And then how Brother Dong will continue here? Then Brother Lee replied to him, I have no more words to minister. Now you minister the words to the saints in South America, to the church in South America. That was a transition. Did you realize it or not? That was a transition. Brother Lee replied that Brother Dong should start ministering the word to the church in South America himself. Thus, another stage of Brother Dong's ministry begins. I'm already finishing. In 1997, Brother Dong learned that Brother Lee's departure to be with the Lord was imminent. He was sick for a long time in coma. When Brother Dong learned, he, I remember he was here holding conferences. Immediately, he traveled to the United States. Shortly before his arrival, Brother Lee's co-workers stated on his deathbed that they would be faithful, they committed that would be faithful and would not say anything that Butterly had not said. That is, they would not say anything that Butterly had not said. So, Brother Dong was late, did not participate in this commitment. Since he arrived a little later, he asked permission to see Brother Lee and was the last co-worker to see him before his death, his deathbed. This has a meaning. So Brother Dong's great legacy was the organic way in which he led the Lord's work. He did not follow conventional or traditional patterns, but instead made innovations under the guidance of the Spirit always seeking practical results for the advancement of the Lord's work. He was a very productive, innovative, and persevering servant of the Lord. He laid a solid foundation in the Lord's work, which provided all the conditions for the church to move forward toward the church in Philadelphia. Did you understand it? This gave us a foundation for us to get to today's time. Praise the Lord because of this healthy and solid foundation, unconventional, not traditional, with all of those tools the Lord gave it to us. And all of those tools in our days, they were Turbo charge. Praise the Lord. Dynamic co-porting. Turbo charged. All the rest. Turbo charged. GPC, the church life. Networks of care. Book Cafe, Book Expo. Thanks, Book Expo without dynamic co-porting. 
doesn't work. Not only that, today it turbocharged our teens. The house of teens. The house, kids' house. The house of captains. The senior ones. The whole church is functioning. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Working in all continents. Let us make the, son, the male child to be raised and to bring the Lord back. 